When you're thinking about presenting your model, you may want to boost some of the visual quality settings to go from a working mode to a presentation mode. Let's look at some important settings you'll want to know about. I'm in the Chapter 6 Linda Heights model, and I've chosen a proposal called Presentation, and a bookmark called Clubhouse, which gets me zoomed in where I can clearly see the face of the building for our clubhouse. Now you might notice that the building looks a little different than it did in the videos in the previous chapter, or maybe the chapters even before that, and that's because I've kind of backed off the setting I was talking about so we can discuss what happens when you change it. And that's one of the three settings we're going to discuss. But to get into where we need to be, I'm going to click the Settings and Utilities icon, which you can see I already have, and then within that set of tools, we have the Application Options command, so I'll click that also. For now, we want to focus in this Model Generation section. You can see there's a list here of six or seven or eight settings. We're going to focus on three, Building Facade Detail, Terrain Simplification, and Pre-Compute Ambient Occlusion. And remember, our discussion here is to talk about balancing between the visual quality that we see in the model and the performance of the computer. And the idea being that up till now, we may have really backed off on these settings so that we can navigate quickly in the model and make all the changes we need to make. Now that the changes are done, we're ready to really visualize this model, so we want to crank things back up again from that perspective. So building facade detail is a good one to talk about first. You can see it's currently set to low. And if I slide the dialog out of the way, you can see it's almost like a scene has been painted on the flat face of the building. There's no three-dimensional detail to it. So I'm going to crank this up to high, click OK. And when I do, nothing's going to happen. That's because I need to regenerate the model in order to see the effect in this case. There aren't many things in InfraWorks 360 that you have to regenerate after doing them, but this is one. So I'll click Regenerate. One of the kind of bummers about regenerating is that it's going to reset my view of the model to the home view. Luckily, I have a bookmark called Clubhouse, and I can just click on that and go right back into the model. So now you can see what's been done to the building with that facade setting set to high. There's much more detail. It's a three-dimensional facade. I actually see shadows that are cast, and it's just a much more beautiful look to the building, much more detail, and obviously the three dimensions as well. Now if you have a lot of buildings in your model and with facades, which by the way these guys in the back, these are not buildings with facades, they're actual three-dimensional models of buildings so they're completely not affected by this setting, but if I had a bunch of buildings in my model and I turn this setting on I may see a really drastic effect to the performance of the model. In my case we only have one building, it's a fairly small model and it really doesn't have an effect. And I have a pretty good computer, so that plays a part in it as well. So that's the first setting we'll discuss. The second one I want to talk about is called Terrain Simplification. And you can probably guess what we're going to do here just by the name of the setting. Before I apply this, though, I want to change a few things. I'm going to pick a bookmark called Terrain. And I'm going to turn on Wireframe. And I'll do that by clicking the Core Tools, the Create icon, and then wireframe. And the reason I picked this view is because I've got a pretty dense terrain in this area. You can see all the triangles and all the lines. It's very complex and sophisticated. So now we'll go back into our settings and we'll use terrain simplification to simplify the setup of our terrain. And I'm going to type 50 here. It's kind of a percentage where zero is original, 50% simplification is going to remove some of the lines and result in bigger triangles. And then the closer you get to 100, you're kind of completely flattening out the terrain and removing all the detail. So 50 is a good guess, and you might want to do an iterative approach to this when you're doing this on your own models. I'll click OK, and I have to regenerate the model because in the process of regenerating the model, it's going to recalculate the terrain and apply that simplification factor. When it's done, I'll restore my bookmark. Once again, this one's called Terrain. And we can see now that there are a lot fewer triangles in the Terrain model. And if you've got a really large model with a really densely configured terrain, this can have a huge impact on the performance of the model. And depending on how the model is originally and how much simplification you apply, it may or may not have a big impact on the shape of the terrain. 
If I turn the wireframe off, take a look at the shape of the terrain, I really don't see a huge difference. So I'll just have to inspect it closely and see if I'm happy with the result or if it just has flattened things out a little too much. But for now, for this example, we can go ahead and leave it as is. The third setting I want to talk to you about, I really can't demonstrate because it doesn't have a very dramatic impact on the model, but it can affect performance. So that's this last one here, pre-compute ambient occlusion. Without getting too deep into this, ambient occlusion has to do with how light bounces off of different parts of the model. And what I found is that turning it on really doesn't have a very dramatic effect on the model and that having it off actually helps with performance a little bit. So my choice or my suggestion is to keep it off and leave it off because the benefits aren't worth what it can do to the performance of your model. So now you know about a few key settings that will help you find the right balance between visual quality and performance.